In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this 2D dinosaur and the rest of this cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you want to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. This week I'm working on a dinosaur cake and it's one of my popular designs and I wanna show you how I do that. I need to thank you all, um, the super thanks that have been coming in from you guys. If you don't know what super thanks is, there's a little heart below the video where it says like, like, share. You can scroll to the left and there's a little heart that says thanks and you can send little donations to your favorite creators. And I've been getting donations from you guys and I can't thank you enough. I am so grateful for you. I've been learning so much from, from you and you guys are just amazing and I am so thankful. And also I'm gonna separate this in chapters because I know that it's going to be a little uh, lengthy of a video so you can skip around to whatever part you wanna see. So that's enough, let me stop talking and let's get into the video. All right, here's the little T-Rex that I'm gonna make, he's adorable. I will link this picture in the description below. And I measured my cake. So I just took a ruler. The tier that this is going on is just over six inches high. So I wanted him to be a little less than six inches. So when I printed him out, I used Microsoft Word to print out my pictures. I just printed him under six inches. So he's five and a half inches tall. I colored fondant. This is a mixture of leaf green, golden yellow, and a little bit of black to darken it up. And I rolled it out, you know, I don't know, what is that, a quarter of an inch thick? If I roll it out thick, then I can get some detail in here. I always add a little bit of Tylose powder to my fondant. The Tylose powder is going to help the fondant set hard. If you try to do this process with fondant that is soft, it's not going to work. When you cut it, it's going to drag. It's not going to hold its shape. You're going to be miserable. <laughs> So I will link this below. This is actually Wilton Gumtex in here. I just like this container. So I will link the Tylose powder below. A little bit goes a long way. You sprinkle it in your fondant, knead it together, roll it out, let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. Let the Tylose powder start to work and start to stiffen up the fondant before you start to work with it. I have a cutting board and I have a piece of non-skid pad underneath the cutting board. That way it doesn't slide around when I'm working. I have a folded up wet paper towel in the corner. That way I can wipe off my X-Acto knife as the fondant starts to stick to it. I have an X-Acto knife. I have a needle tool and a Dresden tool, my, my favorite tool. I will try to find this. This one is hard to find, but I'll find a similar one and link it below. I use the curved end and one comes to a point, one is flatter and I just love this tool. So I looked at the colors in here and also rolled out fondant, light green, dark red, white and black. Those are all the colors in this dinosaur. And for all four of those colors, I, there's Tylos mixed in here as well, rolled it out super thin. All right, so all the other colors that I have are very thinly rolled out and the green that the T-Rex is gonna be is a little thicker. All right, and now just lay this down on top, make sure that the entire thing is being covered and I want to, I'm gonna use the curved part of the flatter end of this to trace. And I'm gonna trace the line and transfer it onto the fondant. And like I always say, you have to find like a medium pressure. If you press too hard and put a hole in the fondant, it's difficult to cut that out. It's, it's super annoying and it still happens to me, but um, so I'm gonna trace every line in here. All right, so I'm gonna start with the very outside. So just tracing along the black outer line. And I'm keeping my other hand down. That way the paper doesn't shift. I'm gonna hold this down. Don't lift it up, just peel it back. And you can see the line on the fondant. Now we're gonna do the inner lines. And same thing. So you can see the little black line here. So we're gonna start with a little smile. Trace the inner part of the mouth. So I have the entire outline done and now I'm just trying to make sure that I do all the inner lines. So now with the colored fondant, there's gonna be fondant here. So I'm just getting the outline of where everything has to go. I don't have to trace this black part because that's gonna go on the white fondant. And continuing the outline and coming up so anything that's on the inside. Now this 
light green is going to be a separate piece on top so I don't have to trace this whole thing I'm just going to trace the outside not the lines in the middle because the lines in the middle are going to be on the light green piece now I'm going to trace his arm and does this look a little obscene <laughs> like what is this right here I know it's his knee but it looks like something else <laughs> but just making sure that that's all traced as well. Okay, so same thing. Hold your hand down and peel it back and make sure you traced all of the lines. And it looks like everything is on here. Perfect, so now I'm ready to lift it up. I'm gonna keep the picture close for reference. So you might not be able to see it, it'll be off camera, but I'm just gonna lean it up like this just so I can keep looking at it. When I'm deep in the lines, I wanna make sure that I can follow the picture to make sure I'm getting all the lines. So now I don't wanna use the pointy end. I'm still using the flatter end and the curve. I'm not sticking the very point down into the fondant. And I just wanna deepen all the lines that I made. So using the picture as a reference. So now this will make it sense as we go on. However, the mouth here, this part and the eye, I want to push the fondant down a little bit. So when I put, when I put the white and the red part over it, it's not sticking out, it's gonna sit flush with the piece. So I'm gonna start, now stay on the inside of the lines that you made, and I'm just using the flat part of this to flatten it out and try to push it down a little bit. And same thing for this part of the eye. Also, what makes it a little easier, I love these ball tools. These are Sculpey ball tools. I'll link them in the description. Everything will be linked in the description. Um, ball tools make it a little easier to press down. However, when you get to the edges, you're going to need the Dresden tool just to press it down in the corners as well. Now let's cut this out. So since this fondant is a little thicker, I'm going to make a shallow cut and then a deeper cut. So if I just cut all the way down like this and drag, look, it's, it's going to mess up the fondant. So what I like to do, I'm gonna use like, kind of like a sawing motion like this or just lightly drag it and make a shallow cut. So I'm just sticking the tip of the blade in. And then once it's done, I'm gonna come all the way down and cut it out. That way I'll have a line as a guide and it's not going to mess up the piece. So I'm just kind of sawing up and down, getting a shallow cut, wipe the blade off on the wet paper towel as the fondant starts to stick to it and just repeat the process. You see how I'm doing this in sections? Um, I don't think I'm gonna include this little nostril over here because I think it'll be a pain in the butt. So I'm just going to cut this way. <laughs> but I'm doing this in sections. So I'm stopping here and then I'm turning around and putting the point at the intersection and then continuing, right? So you just get cleaner cuts if you do small spurts rather than just try to drag it through the entire thing. And since I'm cutting the outside out, I wanna stop here where it meets. I'm not cutting all the way up here. I'm just cutting out the entire outline. Now that I have that all cut out, I'm going to stick this all the way down to the board and use the line as I just made as a guide and cut the entire thing out. So this is all cut out. And if you look really close, you can see that there are jagged edges. These, it just doesn't look good, right? And that always happens when I cut something out of fondant. So you have to take your time and smooth it out. So I'm gonna carefully lift it up, turn it over, use my fingers to, and I'm just smoothing the outside edge from the back. And I find that smoothing from the back helps make the front look better. <laughs> it may seem wasteful because this part's gonna be up against the cake, but it does help. 
So what I'm doing, I'm smoothing the line. I'm kind of rounding that cut with my fingers and with tools. There's a little piece sticking out right here. And I'm just going to take my tool, my Dresden tool or whatever you're using and press it back down on itself to smooth it out. Good. And once the back is done, carefully flip it over, do the same thing from the front. Like up here, you see how it's jagged from cutting? So I just want to round that and smooth it. All right, and from smoothing out, um, I lost some of the detail. It's kind of like with makeup, <laughs> you know, as you blend, you lose it. So you just want to go back and re-deepen the lines um, and just make sure that everything is prominent. All right, if you want to get technical, you could put this back down on top although I'm still going to have to use this so you could print two pictures at the same size and realign it so it's in the right shape All right and I'm just going to set this aside and cut out the other pieces so now let's take the red piece and same thing I'm going to lay this on top and use my Dresden tool to trace the red part And since this fondant is really thin, I don't have to make a shallow cut. So I could just put the blade all the way down to the cutting board and cut it out. And after every time I cut something out, I'm always going to smooth the edges. So I'm not going to keep saying that in the video, but just cut and smooth as well. Now I'll do the same thing for the lighter green piece. I'm just going to trace over the arm and then under the neck. Right, and just get this little shape here. And then I'm going to trace these lines as well. All right, I'm bringing this guy back. I have a little bit of water and a paintbrush. Very important that you don't use a lot of water. Uh, you don't want it seeping out the sides. So I just want to make sure that this fits in this little area here and it's perfect. So you know what? I actually want to press this down just a little bit so the belly isn't sticking up too much. Um, it doesn't have to be as deep as the, the mouth and the eye. And now I just want to get a little bit of water on the back, just enough to make it sticky. And you want to make sure you get to the edges, but you don't want any water to seep out underneath and get on this dark green fondant. Laying it on top and then I can use, you know, my tool, I can use ball tools, I can use my Dresden tool to kind of push the ends down. So I'm smoothing the ends down, trying to make it look flush. And then I can retrace these lines to make them deeper. So I'm pushing this down on the side, just trying to make it look flush with the dark green piece and not so it's just sitting on top, you know. All right, same for the mouthpiece, and that fits in there perfectly. So getting a little water on the back and doing the same thing. All right, now I wanna do the eye. I had a bubble here, so I just wanna make sure I have a good piece of the fondant. And I'm just going to trace this part here. Same thing for the toes and the teeth. So I'm just gonna trace those. The teeth are a little tricky because they're so tiny, but it's just the same process. So let's trace those and cut them out. So these, I'm just making one big piece. Good, put them down, make sure they look good and then glue them down with a little water. Now I just want to put the line in separating the little toes. Now the part that's the most pain in the butt is the teeth. So there's six little triangles. So I'm going to trace where the mouth is. So I'm tracing the red part. Good. And now I'm going to trace the triangles. So I'm going to cut the the curve of the mouth first and then cut each triangle out. These little pieces can get so annoying to work with. 
So this first one is closer to the curve in the front. And I'm making sure that it's down covering the edge of the red. Right, so I'm pushing it down to where the crease is. I'm not just laying it straight on top. I'm gonna let the point stick up a little bit. Now for the teeth on the other side, it starts on the red part, so I'm not gonna put it in here. I'm putting it on the crease here. And I kinda want the points to stick up a little bit. And then I just wanna make the pupil. So I have the black here. And I want this flush with the white part at the top, right? And I have my little handy thing of tips and I'm just gonna find a tip that matches this white piece. All right, this is a number six tip. Grab a piece of white and cut a little circle out. Adorable! Now, this looks good as it is, right? However, we need to step it up a notch. It can look so much better, so we're going to dust it. I have some petal dust here. Um, Global Sugar Art closed down. That's where I used to get all of these, but I can find similar petal dust and link it, to, link it below. I have dark and lighter brown and some black. And also I have a bunch of paint brushes. I think that I cut some of these. I trimmed them so they came to a point. <laughs> Um, this one looks like it came like this. I get these at Michael's craft store. I can link them below. Just something paint brushes with a really, really thin tip. So I'm going to start with the dark chocolate first. And a brush that has a, you know, a tip that kind of comes to a point. Get a little bit on the brush and tap it. A little bit of this goes a long way. Actually, let's get some in the lid, right? And then I just want to start to color in basically and deepen any of these lines. So you can always add more color. So it's a good to start light and then you can go back and deepen it. It's a little more difficult to take it away once it's added on there. Okay, I actually think I want to try the black for the lines and black is very, very strong. So you really only need a little bit. I'm just looking at the picture. See there's some, there's some black underneath here and just trying to shade it in. Um, as best as I can, just to give it a little more interest, a little more depth. And I also like to kind of shade the edges a little bit as well. This is very subtle because the green is dark, so you're not going to really be able to tell a big difference, but it does make a difference. So I'm just kind of shading along the edge. You can see inside of the mouth, it has some darker detailing in it. And here's your little dinosaur. So a few options. I'm not ready to put this on the cake yet. And I have, I'm putting this on a six inch cake. So I have a six inch cake dummy here and you can dry it on the side of a cake dummy. However, my cake dummy is not tall enough because I made this really tall. So if you don't have the correct size cake dummy, I'm going to put it in this Ziploc bag and it's easier to transfer if it's on a piece of paper. I just want to realign him on here so he is in the correct position. And it might move around a little bit, that's okay. And stick him inside this plastic bag for a couple hours until I'm ready to put him on the cake. That way he's not going to dry out and I'll be able to put him on the cake with no problem. Um, you could probably make it up to a day in advance and leave it in a Ziploc bag. I'm just going to store him here until I'm ready to put him on the cake. And I will show you quickly how I do the rest of the cake because I know people are going to ask. I don't have enough time to do very detailed 
description, but I did film it for you. So here's how I did the rest of the cake. Right now I'm doing the same thing for the other dinosaur. So I'm tracing the outline and then the lines on the inside, making sure it's all transferred to the fondant and deepening the lines with my Dresden tool. Cutting the entire thing out and smoothing it like always. And doing the same thing for the other pieces, trace, cut, and smooth. And this piece that goes on the top, I like to make it one piece. It's much easier than to cut tons of little triangles here. And for the eyes, I just use a little round circle cutter and round circle cutter, <laughs> same thing. I'm deepening with some petal dust, just using a ball tool to make sockets for the eyes. I did cut a little piece off of the, right, the eye on the right, um, just so it would sit flush and same thing assembling the piece I got some green dust and I decided to deepen uh, a couple of the areas on the dinosaur it just makes it look a little bit better and I used some edible marker this is a lot easier to get this detail in here so I used brown and then a little bit of black for the pupil and a teeny, teeny, teeny piece of white fondant to get that little dot in the eyes. Now I'm moving on to the other decorations and I measured the top of my cake. I made sure the name is going on the top that everything is printed out the correct size. I rolled out some fondant, a little thick, and I always put some Tyler's powder. Tyler's powder is in all of this fondant and I'm doing the same exact technique. So I'm doing tracing all of the letters and doing a shallow cut since it's a, it's a thicker piece of fondant. I always cut the center pieces out first. It's a lot easier to cut and smooth the center pieces and then uh, cutting out all of the letters. And always making sure you smooth your cuts. Realigning everything so to make sure that the letters are in the correct position and I'm doing the same thing for the number I rolled the fondant out thick I have a little stone impression mat and just press it down here to get a little nice texture on here And I have to use a needle tool to get the impression because using a Dresden tool to trace doesn't work when you have a pattern so I'm just poking little dots around the entire perimeter of the three and using the dots as a guide to cut it out. Again, I'm doing a shallow cut first and then cutting the entire number out. And as always, smoothing it. Do I even have to say that anymore? Realign it on top of the paper to make sure it's in the correct position. Set it aside and I'm moving on to the moon. Is this a moon or it's a sun? Whatever it is. <laughs> I don't have a circle cutter that big, so I'm doing the same thing. Trace, shallow cut, you know, cut it out, smooth it out, realign it. You know the process. And I just want to transfer all of those decorations onto a separate cutting board because I want these to dry. So I'm just setting these aside um, at room temperature just to dry for a little bit. Now I want to make the hills. I want to measure the side of my cake where the hills are going to go to make sure that I don't make these too tall. I have some brown fondant, some cornstarch, rolling it out, making sure it's long enough, wide enough. So I'm starting with a straight edge on the bottom. I know I need two and a half inches on the bottom, so I'm just lining it up, making sure I'm cutting a two and a half inch strip. And now I wanna make it look hilly, so I'm just using my pizza cutter and going up and down and up and down and making it look like mountains. I have my airbrush coloring. You have to use airbrush coloring in an airbrush machine. I will link the machine below. I love this thing. and. The dial, turning it back just a little bit, it's not on super high spray, and I turn the hills facing towards me, and I'm spraying the top of the hill, and I just want to uh, add some visual interest, basically. So I sprayed the very top, and I'm using a circular motion now to shade in underneath it. Um, it just, see how much better it looks when it has a little bit of airbrush coloring to it, and just deepening everything up. 
I have my cake fresh out of the refrigerator, some shortening and a paintbrush. Shortening is very forgiving. I have the front of my cake here, so I'm going to the back making little marks. That's where I want the seam to be with the hills. And I'm painting some shortening where I'm going to put the hills on the cake. Shortening is very forgiving. That way I can move it um, if needed. And then I'm taking this piece and wrapping it around the cake. Now this piece does have Tylos powder in it, so it's not falling apart. You must have some Tylos in it so it holds its shape where it meets, uh, cutting through both pieces, removing that back piece, and then putting it together for a perfect seam and just pushing it against the cake and pushing it down to the cake board. And when you have shortening, you can do that. And I'm doing the same thing for the top where it meets, cutting a piece and making the seam perfect. I can remove, remove shortening with, some, with a paintbrush so it's very easy. I'm gonna stick that back in the fridge and let's work on the bones. This fondant does have Tylos in it. Roll it into a ball roll the center part a little thin, keep the ends a little thicker. Take my pointy part of my Dresden tool, the thinner end, and just make that impression in there. And try to use your fingers to make it just look like a bone. <laughs> so just making that impression, now pressing in the middle to lengthen it a little bit, and then just refining those ends. And look how easy that is. Little bone, let's try it again. So roll it in your hands and then rolling the center part a little thinner than the ends. Take my Dresden tool, make the impression, and then I have to use my fingers to refine it a little bit, lengthening it, you know, using the tool to make the little marks in the end, and just refining it. I'm smoothing it out. I'm making the ends look a little rounder. And there's your bones. Now I'm making pebbles, get a little Crisco in my hands. I have gray, brown, and white fondant, and I'm going to do little pieces of it. So I think I broke each one into two pieces. And now I'm just going to put them all together and smush them all together <laughs> and roll it in my hands. Rolling it into a log, curve one side up, one side down. Again, rolling it, twist it making a marbling effect and one side up one side down and now i have a nice striping through here break off a little piece roll it in your hands and now i'm just going to make the little stones now stones aren't perfectly round so you know once you roll it you can squeeze it you can you know make it into little rock shapes and just do this a bunch of times making all of your little rocks this one i wanted to flatten it out so i don't like i don't like them to be uniform they should all look different now I wanna make the palm trees. So I'm gonna start with the trunk. This fondant does have Tylos powder in it and I'm rolling a piece into a little cone shape. So it's pointier at the top, wider at the bottom, roll it out and flatten it out. Cutting off the bottom, it was a little too long, bringing out a cutting board and setting this down. Now I have a round tip and I'm just using the curved end. I'm not pushing the whole thing in there, but I'm just making a little texture in the tree trunk to look like a palm tree. Now I have a leaf cutter and I can use this on both sides so I can have it curve up to the right and curve up to the left. So I'm cutting out about eight leaves per tree. I think I made in I made three trees. So I cut out a bunch of leaves and now to get that palm tree effect, I'm using my X-Acto knife. This part is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but cutting little triangles around the edges. And I'm just trying to make sure that the triangles don't meet. So I'm doing it, you know, kind of haphazardly and just making it look like a palm leaf. And I decided afterwards that I wanted to add a little bit of detailing in here. So I just used my Dresden tool to make it look a little leafy, like Phoebe, leafy. <laughs> so now I have my other decorations back. I cut out a pterodactyl doing the same trace cut and smooth method. I have some brown airbrush color and a paper towel. I always have a paper towel when I airbrush, turning it on. And I just wanna airbrush the edges, um, just deepening. Do you see how it just makes it look better when you airbrush? I don't know, once you buy an airbrush, you're gonna use it all the time. Same thing for the number three, I'm deepening it a little bit, 
adding some interest with some color. I have toothpicks and some skewers, and I'm gonna stick these in the bottom. Now, I did let these dry a little too long. I should have stuck these in probably the day before, but um, it, they were okay. Getting a little bit of piping gel on the back of the pterodactyl and sticking him on the moon or the sun, whatever it is, and getting those wet toothpicks. The wet end of the toothpicks are going into the letters and these are gonna be able to stand up on top of the cake. Now the S, it has to go in on an angle. If I put it in straight, it was gonna pop out and you would see the toothpick. Same thing with the O, it's gotta go in on an angle. I put it through the very bottom where it's gonna to touch the cake and put the toothpicks up. And for the N, I decided to do two. Now let's decorate the cake. This has been sitting in the refrigerator. I want to clean off the cake board with a wet paper towel just to make it look nice and pretty. I'm holding up the pictures here so I can see the placement. Where do I want to put these dinosaurs? So I'm going to do the T-Rex up and to the right. Get a little piping gel on the back. I'm getting piping gel around the edges. That way the edges will stick and a little bit of icing in the middle. Um, it's just any anything you could do to stick it to the cake. And just adjusting it and then pulling the tail out a little bit just to give it a little motion and then doing the same thing for the other dinosaur. And now the number three, because I waited too long to put a skewer in it, it there was a little crack that formed. So I got a little bit of orange buttercream and a dry paintbrush and I just filled in the cracks there and I am putting the toppers on, making sure they're in the correct position. I put extra skewers in there to make sure that they won't twist. I held up the mason sign to make sure that I can center it and have the correct placement for the letters, getting a little bit of piping gel on the bottom and sticking these into the cake. Oop, that wasn't in the right spot. I shifted it. The M was leaning to the side, so I'm just readjusting these so they look right. Now the S, I can't stick it straight. I have to stick it in on an angle. And the O has to go on an angle the other way. Actually, the toothpick is a little long, so let me just cut off a little piece of it and angle this in. And then putting the end down. And now I want to put the palm tree on, so not too close to the dinosaur. I am getting a little bit of icing on the back. Piping gel probably would have been a little better choice, but whatever you can use to stick it and pushing it against the cake. The other trunk was a little too long, so I was just trimming it. And same thing, just sticking that to the side. Now with the leaves, they curve down to the right or down to the left. So I just wanna find the leaves that I wanna put in the right position. You can use icing, you can use piping gel and just start adding them to the trunk. This time I just wanted to try to use a little piping gel just to show you that there's different ways that you could stick decorations to the cakes. So I'm finding the placement first and then get a little bit of something sticky on the back and place that on the cake. And I think I do six, about five or six different leaves. This one I'm covering the top of the trunk, get a little bit more icing back behind it so it can hold. And then it kind of squeezes out and I will fix that. And then I figured I want to put one down here so I have to lift up this top leaf so I can stick one down underneath it. So you just have to find the best uh, pattern or best situation for the leaves. Um, to make it look like a palm tree, just removing that excess icing. Doing the same thing for the other ones and the one in the back. Now for the clouds, I have an icing bag with a tip number 10. And look, I'm just super simple clouds. Squeeze, make little circular motions, and there you go, you have clouds. Later on, I will just smooth them out once the icing crusts with a wet paintbrush just to push down any points. Now I have black icing in a bag with a tip number two, I'm making those little birds that you used to draw when you were in elementary school. <laughs> and just doing some small ones, some larger ones, all around the cake on both tiers. Now I have green icing in a bag with a grass tip and you just squeeze and lift to get the grass out. Get a little bit of piping gel behind one of the bones and I want this other bone on there just to give it some visual interest. 
All right, so I'm just adding the decorations. I figured, hey, I want some dirt. So I had these, these Oreos that I keep in that container and I put them through a food processor so it looks like dirt. And just get a little bit on that tip of the spoon so it doesn't go all over the place. I put some piping gel down underneath it so it would kind of hold it into place and it won't slide off of the board. And then just getting piping gel underneath the decorations as I put them down on the board. Again, piping gel down before the dirt. That way the dirt won't slide off. And then placing your stones and bones <laughs> around the cake, a little bit of grass. And I'm just doing this kind of haphazardly around the entire cake. And just putting a couple decorations on the top, not overcrowding it, getting a little bit of glue on the outside and making it look pretty with a ribbon. And there's the final product. So there you go, how cute is this cake? It's one of my favorite designs. I love when people order it because it's so much fun to make. I'll put the finished product over here. And this is actually the, the size of the tiers. The top tier is six inches, but it's three layers. And the bottom tier is an eight inch two layer torted. I have a video explaining the different sized tier. Why did I say it like a tier? <laughs> the different sized tiers that I use and different options that you have when making cakes. And this will feed, oh geez, do I have to do the math? I think it was like 35 to 40. So I know the rest of the, the video showing how I did the rest of the cake was not very detailed. However, I do have detailed videos showing how I make number toppers and how I do other things. I will link those below as well if you want to uh, learn a little more about that. And did you guys like that? If you did, if you like me kind of just giving a quick synopsis, if you will, of how I made the rest of the cake, let me know and I'll do that a little more often. So I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. And you can follow me on socials and I have my website and it's listed in the description below as well. And if you wanna stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and remember it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.